Kibbe Power Hour is a free bi-weekly webinar series for accounting professionals presented by Michelle Long and Dan DeLong, who are very passionate about the industry, QuickBooks, and apps that integrate with QuickBooks. You can find out all the details about the webinar series at QBPowerHour.com. So without further ado, here's Michelle and Dan. All right, and we have Michelle and Dan and Mark, actually, today. Uh, so we're going to be carrying, where did it go? <laughs> there it is. Okay. Aha, there we go. <laughs> back and forth and back and forth. All right, well, welcome to another QB Power Hour, where today we're going to be talking about Shopify integrations, which ones to choose. They, if you ever have looked at the App Store uh, or that burning question of my client has a Shopify, and I want to get that into uh, QuickBooks online. Um, well, this is this is the webinar for you <laughs> because we'll we'll be talking about some of the things that are already in QuickBooks Online and some of the things that are out there. Like if you've ever looked at the App Store and and done a uh, Shopify, you know, keyword search for Shopify and see that there's uh, quite a few <laughs> uh, Shopify connectors out there. Um, it is it is quite complicated as to determine well which one works best, right? So, Michelle, good to see hey you. There. Good to see <laughs> you. Yes. Hey, it's a nice sunny spring day. So I am looking forward to, to doing this because it is confusing when you look out there and you see all those different apps. So I think I love this because I don't know about some of you people, but I get analysis paralysis and it gets you spend a lot of time going in there and, and, and analyzing them. So I'm very excited about this today and glad to have you guys joining us. So my name is Michelle Long. I am a CPA and an owner of Long for Success and glad to get, have you all joining us. Been a contract trainer for Intuit since 2007, author of five different books. Check them out if you're interested. And there's the links to the group on Facebook as well as LinkedIn. And love to have you guys join us there and continue the conversation. Dan, go ahead. Yeah, my name is Dan DeLong, owner of Dan With, where we transform businesses through technology. And part of that is connecting their QuickBooks online with their, with their Shopify. And so uh, really glad to have Mark and Gennady here from uh, We Integrate to talk about their solution. Uh, worked at Intuit for nearly 18 years, co-hosting today as also the uh, co-host at uh, Workshop Wednesdays over at School Bookkeeping and doing some of the tech editing duties at the or for the uh, QBO for Dummies uh, series of books. So Mark and Gennady, you want to uh, introduce uh, your panel? It looks like you you brought a whole list of folks to, <laughs> today. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And thanks, Dan and Michelle, for having us today. We're really excited to uh, share uh, how uh, we uh, integrate uh, Shopify with uh, QuickBooks Online. I think about how I did that. Um, but uh, I am Mark Cowan. I'm uh, one of the co-founders here, uh, and I've been involved with uh, SaaS-based uh, operation and inventory, warehousing, uh, accounting systems uh, for over 20 years, uh, focusing on the small business market. And uh, we saw a real big need here uh, in helping uh, automate the bookkeeping process between uh, systems such as Shopify and QuickBooks Online, and there became We Integrate. Uh, so, Gennady, would you like to... Uh, Take your turn. Yes, thank you for that, uh, uh, Mark and Dan and Michelle. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Gennady Kleiner. I'm responsible for the technology uh, for We Integrate and a co-founder. Uh, I have uh, over 25 years working with uh, various size organizations, um, from small to large, integrating various types of systems, and uh, have been using QuickBooks probably since the early 90s. I would say at this point. Um, so very near and dear to uh, the pains that uh, folks are going through. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. And then you've, you've got Randy. He's not with us yes. today, but uh, <laughs> you want to talk well, a little bit about your relationship with Randy? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we had the, the fortune of uh, connecting with Randy uh, maybe about a year or so ago. Um, and initially it was uh, just to see if he would be interested in writing up some stuff on us. You know, I found him... Uh, <laughs> through uh, the CPA uh, periodically that he affiliates with. And in conversations we had, uh, he just was like really into what we're doing and thought we we're taking a really unique approach, you know, compared to some of the other uh, systems out there doing. And, you know, just became a real big gel. So he, he joined our advisory board. He's actively participates 
uh, and giving us, you know, guidance and stuff. And we have you know, calls all the time and, and opportunities to really help take his experience and blend that into what we're bringing to market. Yeah, it's always good to see a familiar face with a new with a new player in the market. So <laughs> great to see you and uh, Randy teaming up there. Um, so a little details about the QB Power Hour. Uh, it's every other Tuesday at noon Eastern. You never know where we're going to be. I am somewhere in Georgia uh, <laughs> driving up the I-95 corridor. So live from uh, Cracker, Barrel, uh, <laughs> Cracker Barrel parking lots uh, today. Uh, but you can always check out our uh, website for upcoming events, um, as well as go to qbpowerhour.com slash resources for the PDFs of the slides, uh, recordings, and the podcast. And if you are listening to the to the podcast and you and you feel like uh, it's worthwhile for, for others, please put a review in uh, for the podcast because that, that's what triggers the, the whole algorithm thing. So appreciate you uh, putting in a review for the, for the podcast because uh, we do have uh, you know several folks uh, listening uh, as as a replay I'm not sure if they just like hearing our voices Michelle uh, after the fact um, because it is really hard to look at slides when <laughs> when you're on the when you're listening on your Apple podcast or wherever you get your get your podcast from but if you could put in a review that would really help us out. Uh, letting us, uh, you know, getting getting that information to, to other folks. Uh, if you have a little housekeeping, if you have uh, some some questions about the specific topics that we're talking about there uh, today, uh, please uh, put them in the Q and A because it makes it real a lot easier for us to uh, to follow up with that. Um, if you have some general comments, um, we have the chat available for that and, and Gennady will be uh, handling uh, some of the, the Q&A and, and chat duties for uh, the We Integrate side of things. So uh, please keep them on his toes. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> please put those uh, specific questions in the Q&A. Uh, but if you have general, you know, general comments uh, about Cracker Barrel or the I-95 <laughs> corridor, please put them in the chat. <laughs> Okay. Um, we also have the links there for the uh, for the webinar archive, so you can watch other uh, replays as well. Uh, so something that's new for the uh, QB Power Hour is we're trying to simulcast and get uh, get more folks um, the ability to see and, and participate in the Power Hour uh, rather than just doing it through this uh, through this webinar format. So we're we're simulcasting on our Facebook group, inside of YouTube, as well as LinkedIn. Um, there's no need to register, uh, but the challenge is, is you can't really participate as much as you can if, if you register on the, on the Zoom uh, Zoom webinar. But you know, if you if you just be happen happening to pop by and, and you want to uh, watch, uh, great. That certainly is okay. Um, there is a QR code on this screen uh, because of oops, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to remove it off of the uh, the simulcast, but uh, I can see it's like a it, there's two <laughs> uh, on what, what's going on on YouTube and, and Facebook. There's two uh, two QR codes, um, but because our Facebook group is uh, the privacy settings are, are private, right? Like so, not everybody can see these global posts and whatnot. Um, if you participate in the comments there uh, on the group. Uh, it will just show up as Facebook user, which is just uh, exactly somebody said that the very same thing. <laughs> they said hello, uh, but it says Facebook user. So we have no idea uh, what that uh, who that person is if we wanted to uh, follow up. But um, you can scan the QR code and it will allow us to be able to or allow Facebook to, to see you or the streaming platform just to, to see your name so that we can see who's commenting and uh, and be able to address you by name rather than Mr. Facebook user. All right, and let's go ahead and uh, stop that. Okay, perfect. Um, another thing for uh, 2024 is we're, we're, we're taking, a, taking a stab at a store, <laughs> um, you know, and, uh, you know, Michelle and I, we do this out of the, out of the kindness of our heart. <laughs> um, but you know there are expenses and things like that that, that go along with uh, with doing this sort of thing. Uh, so to help uh, help us out, uh, we appreciate if you if you want to check out some of the, the the store items that we have on online, not using Shopify, uh, we, uh, but we have some uh, 
time and uh, electricity-based uh, swag there. So chargers and coffee mugs and, and those types of things uh, to be able to um, show your love for, uh, for the Power Hour. Check it out if you feel so inclined. And Michelle and I are nominated among, among other uh, folks for the uh, top 100 this year. Voting is open. Uh, so please, uh, you, if, if you are so inclined, uh, please click on the link there and vote for up to three. So, you know, you've got an extra vote there. If you're, <laughs> if you're sharing the love for, for Hill and I, uh, that, that'd be great. You still have one other. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of people that, that come to the TV Power Hour who are among this list. It's, 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 a, it's a pretty nice, um, you know, yearly, yearly thing. And, and you know, we hope uh, to see some new faces as well. Uh, in this in this list, so our agenda today, um, we're gonna we're gonna kind of set the stage for the options for Shopify sellers, right? So um, there are, you know, when it comes to um, you know getting Shopify information into QuickBooks, there's there's choices about detailed information or summary, and and that really just depends, you know, knowing having the answer to that question will will certainly help guide in these um, myriad of questions or a myriad of options that are that are out there. We'll talk about the Shopify connector inside of QuickBooks because uh, it certainly is uh, important uh, for, for those in the accounting profession to, to at least know that, it, that it's there and kind of the idea of what it does well, what it doesn't do so well and um, you know where it fits, uh, what, what lane it, it basically occupies in the the Shopify online QuickBooks online space, uh, and then we'll we'll talk about uh, we integrate. You know, for because typically what we'll see with anything that that uh, that is in QuickBooks directly is it does the short the shallow end of the pool, right? It does a little bit well, uh, but typically most people are 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 looking for more than than what that does, and then that extends the search to what what else is out there. And, Michelle had mentioned the analysis paralysis of you know trying to find the right uh, the right fit uh, for for what it is that I wanted uh, that we want to do, and we'll talk about what we integrate does well over uh, the Shopify connector. So we'll start off with our first poll question, which is not on my screen. There it is. <laughs> uh, how many clients do you have with Shopify stores? Right, so this is uh, this is a fairly common situation when it comes to, to Shopify. And, and Mark, I wanted to kind of toss a question over to you while people are, are asking here. Um, what what have you seen as far as like, you know, you start you're you're starting with Shopify as as your sales channel connector, and you know your game plan is is you know to to to, to go to other connectors, but why why Shopify first? Yeah, so, uh, well, because when we would run such surveys like this, uh, overwhelmingly anywhere from 50 to 70% of uh, the need was focused on Shopify. Um, obviously, that's not the only factor that we go into such a decision, but we also saw that, you know, from our perspective and our experiences and the conversations we had with uh, bookkeepers and, and accounting professionals that were working in that space, um, but, but, you know, Sh Shopify is easy to use, so people gravitate to it. Uh, but uh, their thoughts around integration uh, seemed to be that there were some systems out there, but it wasn't you know, the, quite the fit they were looking for. So we saw a bit of a problem that was causing people aggravation and an opportunity that was covering anywhere from 50 to 70 percent of the market. Uh, got it, got it. We're kind of taking a look at the um, sharing the results here. It looks like of their clientele, um, you know, majority is less than 25 percent, but then those with none is about 30, 33 percent. Um, I, I would be kind of curious how how uh, how that stacks up against others, you know, as far as, you know, other other sales channels like Amazon, eBay and, you know, those those types of things. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it seems to be. The most common, you know, online marketplace uh, to, to kind of work with, um, you know, they do a really good job of, of marketing. Uh, so. <laughs> But right. it is certainly uh, one of those things that, that people see first. Um, in, in general, Mark, what what is the what 
what's the what's the attraction uh, of, of of Shopify other than the fact that you know that's what other people seem to use. Well, I mean, it, it is easy to get started. You know, when you look at some of the other uh, e-commerce platforms that are out there, some some take a little bit more uh, tech savvy, you know, to your fingertips and your and your thought process to set up. Like, you know, we've looked at some others, um, but Shopify is easy. It's a it's a single thread environment, nice platform to kick off. It's affordable, you know, for the most part, and it just makes it a great starting point for many. Uh, e-commerce businesses that are just getting started, you know, like a lot, you know, lot, the market shifting, right? A lot of people are, you know, getting tired of their day job or looking to supplement themselves, particularly in this economic condition here. And you find that, you know, it's a great way to have a side hustle. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of folks in Amazon, which is probably one of the areas we're going next. And another cool thing about Shopify too, by the way, is they have these connectors now, right? That you connect into these different marketplaces right such as amazon and facebook so it becomes a one-stop shop for everything gotcha well excellent so let me go ahead and stop sharing uh there on the poll so yeah so let's let's talk a little bit about those those connectors and and uh you know the common question and and when i worked at into it this was still you know a a, a common question but there's there's it's almost like um information overload, you know, when it comes to, you know, it's a simple question. How do I get my Shopify information into, into QuickBooks online? Um, and every one of them, if you go to the app store and go to, you know, apps.com or apps. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, QuickBooks online, the, the app center and do a search for Shopify. You can see, I just did one and it was 38 results for, uh, for something with, having to deal with with shopify uh, all of them say seamless <laughs> integration um you know but, but but which one to choose like you know we we, we partner also with bookkeep right as a as a, a shopify connection or a connector of information to uh in, into quickbooks but they do things entirely different than than you do right so like there there is a difference in in how these things are are going to to come in you know you can see here there's uh, a2x on this uh, on the on this screen and they're in the they're in the bookkeep uh, a2x realm where their information comes in uh but they it comes in as a journal entry right or where the journal entry method um is is that's going to have some limitations with what you do in your workflows after in, you know the integration you know after that information comes in yeah it'll it'll post correctly to the to the right general ledger account but uh, you know the challenge is and, and we'll talk to this a little bit when we when we get to you know the deeper deeper dive into the, the the we integrate piece of things is that there's workflows that you're not able to do because of the way things are, are coming in into into quickbooks um, uh, online uh, Michelle, I, I, I've been monopolizing most of the conversation. <laughs> Is this something that you've experienced over, um, you know, with, with working with, um, you know, with consulting with businesses as far as, you know, this kind of question of getting things into um, into QuickBooks from Shopify? Um, I wasn't listening very closely. Sorry, oh. I was trying to help someone. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was trying to help someone troubleshoot with them. Uh, allow them oh. pop-ups to do the poll questions and stuff. But I did hear what you were saying about how they all say seamless and how they don't all come in correctly. I was listening to some of it. And that is the thing that's really frustrating for me. And, um, you know, it is difficult um, to do that and to do the testing to see how they all come over. And they don't all come over seamlessly and they don't all come over cleanly or the way that you want them to. And that is what's very frustrating yeah. for me when I get in there because and this is where desktop is definitely got the advantage. It was much easier to do testing and have a testing environment and stuff than it is with QuickBooks Online. You know, if, even mm -hmm. if you've got the backup feature um, with with um, some of those apps that you can use to where you can do some of that, it's just not as easy in the online realm. And so that's why I like what we're doing here today, talking about um, this. Um, you know, with we integrate and everything, because that really helps us to cut through all the clutter of the 38 results out here and cut to the chase. <laughs> and get yeah, and, and those are and those are the ones that are just on the app store, 
right? I mean, there's I plenty know. of others yeah. that are, that you know, are kind of like under the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. If you look at all of them, then you have 138. So that's why I'm glad we have we integrate here to get through all of this for us and get to cut through the chase and cut through the clutter and get to what really works and what really integrates well and, and cut through some of that for us. So. Yeah, and I and I certainly understand uh, appreciate Mark all of the integrate puns that we can throw uh, with the name of your company, right? And we do we do as well. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> that's my design. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate that. Um, and and Janice was talking in the in the chat here about uh, having an issue with Shopify holding accounts and clearing accounts, and that seems to be one of the things that. Uh, that that is part of the challenge with getting information from you know an online sales channel into into QuickBooks because there is this delay, right? The, the, there's a delay between the time that things are sold, and then there's a you know from the time when money sh shows up in the bank, which you know is the grand scheme in the grand scheme of things is you know a, a, a cruel based right. Um, wide right even if it's just you know invoices and then payments to your for, for your customers there's a there's a gap in time and then if you're doing electronic payments of some sort with those with those in uh, invoice payments that will take some time before it actually shows up into the bank so to janice's uh, uh, point or her question in the in the chat here is that holding or clearing accounts has has been the answer <laughs> um for for most of these connectors uh when you're when you're dealing with okay well how do i deal how do i get the, the sale in there into quickbooks and then the you know days later the the payout is is going to come and then you know on a side note if you're if you're dealing with amazon that could be two weeks from <laughs> from the time of the sale so you've got this uh passage of time that you have to account for when it comes to, you know, money coming into the bank and sales, the sales of things that that happen, and there's other things that happen with that sale, like shipping and fees and and all sorts of other things that people just tend to say, well, well, screw it, I'll just account for everything in the bank feed. And Michelle, that's that's not. That's a no-no, no, right? <laughs> not to mention possible chargebacks or any of those things that can be thrown in there. So it can get really yeah. messy. Yeah, it, yeah. it gets. Really I think that's messy really quickly. <laughs> me messy is probably the, the the nicest way to describe it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to keep right. it PG here. <laughs> so when we spoke <laughs> to many, another common term you hear. <laughs> when we spoke to many accountants when we were designing this, there was a line in the sand that was drawn and, and some folks said you know we, we live and die by journal entries and others said no 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 uh, we, we can't have that we need to know exactly what's happening and so even the holdouts um, with the journal entries when we showed them when we create actual sales receipts when we create actual deposits when we create actual refunds there's no needle in the haystack and so we don't require those clearing accounts as a result and life has become so much simpler for folks yeah. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is great. So let's talk a little bit about what's included in the QuickBooks Commerce Connector, um, which, I mean, if we go back to the last um, slide, it's the first one there. I mean, go figure on uh, how Intuit's connector gets <laughs> gets top billing there when you uh, when you do that. But you can see, uh, you know, it's got two and a half stars as far as the um, as far as the rating is concerned. With with 280 reviews, you know, look at some of these other ones. There's much more high, and there's higher results of that, um, you know, and that that sort of thing. Uh, but as far as the the what's included inside of uh, commerce, the commerce connector, which uh, is, um, you know, we've 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 done a few uh, QB Power Hours in the past, and we'll have links to those uh, as well. If you're like, what the heck is commerce? Um, <laughs> But commerce is included based on the level of QuickBooks Online, right? So with regards to how many connectors you can have, which currently they only have three connectors available, uh, which is kind of silly that plus and advanced is unlimited, but there, 
that's a future. That's a future based thing. You know, they're, they're definitely looking into other connectors as well on the roadmap. Um, but Shopify, Amazon and eBay, which is kind of like the greatest hits of, <laughs> of, of uh, online sales channels and they all handle things differently. So, you know, Shopify being a, a, an online uh, shopping cart, Amazon being a marketplace and eBay being like the American Express of shopping carts, being that they do things on their own method. They, they're, they could be a, a shopping cart, but they're also a marketplace as well. So they're kind of like a hybrid uh, type of thing. Uh, so you with Simple Start, you get one. Essentials, you get up to three. And then plus in advance is unlimited uh, connection. All right. So in the past, we had uh, the, the QB Commerce uh, connection um, power hours. Uh, we had uh, Aaron Walsh Dyer uh, talking uh, with us a, a little bit about that uh, last year. Um, and then we also had the folks from QB Commerce uh, come on last year and talk about the future of it. Um, you know, that was what more than nine months ago. And I haven't seen much more change since then, <laughs> to be quite on. So it's a slow boat. Uh, as far as the, the the future getting getting now, but there are some things that, that are coming in the future with uh, QB Commerce that are kind of cool, like variants, right? Like you, you and and this will be part of the pro, uh, products and services uh, with, with coming into into your list of being able to actually do variances now. Um, there was a, a hint of sales orders uh, coming in, and this is all part of in service to. You know the, this this solution being able to to do these things, but they're not there yet. Um, so that's um, you can take a look at those those things as well. But here's what it does and what it does pretty well, right? It records sales and refunds. It records the payout deposit. It records the channel fees. It records shipping income, and then it also allows you to to enter in sales tax because it's actually creating a sales transaction inside of inside of quick right um, so you can look at there's going to be a, an overview there's uh, there's orders and there's payouts right so that you'll see those different things being able to um, those different areas of, of your of your connector being able to be brought in into uh, into quick well what doesn't it do right <laughs> it won't track inventory <laughs> right so even though you're selling things, on Shopify, and those may be inventory items. The transactions that come into QuickBooks uh, aren't based on an item, right? Um, that may be a future state, but as of today, it does not, right? So those sales that are going to be recorded, yes, they're sales, and they're they're in uh, affecting sales tags. Um, you're only going to have one sales item that you can map that to in in the setting. So that means all of your sales are going to one sales item inside of inside of QuickBooks. Now you'll see the order, and there may be some reference to, to what would actually have been sold, but in the memo, for example, or the the detailed description. But the actual item that's going to be posting to is going to be mapped in the settings. And therefore, you only will have that one item to be able to use, right? So um, I was testing this out before, you know, last week. I have a client who's using, um, he was testing out, we integrate with the Shopify connector and uh, some other ones that are out there we won't mention. Uh, and we were, we were, we had it, I tried to have it mapped to, to an inventory account and those things wouldn't post, right? Because it said, hey, you, you, you can't do that. So, um, and he only had one item for sale. So it was like, hey, this is perfect because I can only, I can choose the one item that's the inventory item. But as soon as you choose an inventory part as a sales item, well, th those orders then don't post. So you won't be able to track inventory inside of QuickBooks Online. Um, and maybe that's what you want, right? Not being able to track track inventory. And if that, you know, is, is where you're, your, your, your client's workflow exists. Maybe they're doing it entirely in, in Shopify and then you're just managing the information in, in QuickBooks. That's a possibility to be able to do that. Another big challenge is that the sales are gonna be recorded on the date of the payout. <laughs> Terrible. 
<laughs> I mean, like that's that's a that's, if you're wanting to account for for the the revenue, then great, do it on the day that it was actually sold. Like, uh, Michelle, would you agree that that is that's like a that's I a, agree. That's, and the other big thing <laughs> I have a problem with with the QB Commerce is the cost, the cost of goods sold. It's like yeah. Ooh, it's missing you know you don't account for the cost at all and so yeah. e commerce is a great like v1 like it has a lot of room for growth and improvement <laughs> um but you know change is slow yeah. as you said on there <laughs> <laughs> right i mean the, the things that uh, that we've been kind of on the on the horizon um yeah. and and you know Mark, you can probably attest to, you know, yeah, we, we'd love to do all these things all at once. Right. Uh, but, you know, there there is a, um, you know, there's a process, you know, to, to making these things come in. And that, you know, I think the best way that I, uh, I heard it described is like, you know, um, code or programming code is like a ball of rubber bands, right? <laughs> and you don't know what you're going to be modifying when you go in to, and change that that code and maybe it's in the middle of the ball and you got to take all of the other rubber bands off in order to fix one thing and then you got to put all those rubber bands back in the exact same way or else you've got a mess on your hands uh, which is which is part of the challenge of making you know changes to to uh, basically a live product when you're, when you're dealing with a with an online fast based software right um so that change has, has been coming, you know, pretty slow with regards to the the commerce connection. All right. So let's go ahead and, and launch our our, la our our next poll. Of, do you have clients using the commerce accounting or QB commerce or on the left side, you've got that commerce you, uh, option. Do you have clients have, using that? Have you come across any clients using this, Dan? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been curious as to what what it looks like. I've been using it mostly for for testing purposes, just to see, yeah. you know, what it does and what it does well. And, you know, there may be a lane that, you know, that a client is driving through <laughs> that uses mm -hmm. that, which is, which is okay. Uh, but typically um, you're, you're going to find that be the shallow end of the pool um, yeah. when it comes to, when it comes to that sort of thing. Yeah. I, I haven't had a client using it and I, definitely haven't had a reason to recommend it yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, the uh, one one thing, I mean, this is kind of off topic with, with Amazon. Um, one of the things about about Amazon, and, and Amazon is a unique individual, uh, unique situation altogether, you know, like completely different than, than, a, than a shopping cart uh, like, like Shopify. Uh, but Amazon will... Um, will basically impound your fee or pound your, you know, basically everything's a fee, but <laughs> they'll, 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 they'll impound your, um, your money, you know, and basically hold on to your money for two weeks. And then every 14 days is when they, when they do a deposit. Uh, one thing that, that I did like about the commerce connection is that because there's a two week span of, of the, the money coming in, um, when it does that over a period, it creates two transactions in the right period, right? So your your um, your your month end uh, would be allocated appropriately as far as far as what sales occurred when. Um, but again, it's one item, so there's no there's no um, inventory with that. Um, and the one I did on January for uh, you know that included December, it put it in the wrong date. Or, you know, it put it in 1231, 2023, <laughs> uh, or 2024. So it put it in the wrong year uh, for, for, for the last year's uh, sales. But I, I did appreciate that was only for the year. Um, months were fine. Uh, but that's curious. Uh, that's um, that's uh, a, di a different animal altogether. Uh, so go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and kind of pass things over to. Uh, to mark there, but I didn't want to share the results of the poll. Uh, looks like uh, about seven percent tried it; didn't work as expected. We're not su not too surprised. 
<laughs> uh, but 10% are currently using it. And, uh, you know, the, it, it does have a place. Um, no, um, 65% of you said this was the first time I've heard about e-commerce. <laughs> so that's a, that's good, that's good a, as far as an educational piece. Um, yeah. And then they, maybe they tried and then 20% have tried it and uh, had some issues with it. So Mark. Yes, sir. Let's talk about the other end of the pool that <laughs> that people are, are are needing and where where integrate where we integrate uh, can can come in. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. I uh, appreciate that, and hopefully, you guys can see my screen okay. Um, yep. You know, there, there's lots of things we could share and show today. We will get into a, a live demo here in a couple minutes. Uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> we want to focus in on maybe like these five key points for today. Uh, I will make a couple of uh, general statements uh, for starters. I know we're talking a lot about Shopify and, and about you, but as soon as I hear Shopify, my brain goes into like the e-commerce online world. But let's not forget Shopify also plays a pretty significant role these days in the POS world. And I do want to point out if anybody has any clients, uh, whether they're exclusive POS on Shopify or a hybrid, um, our, our one connection can support all of it. Um, one of the things that we have built in, we integrate, which we'll show a little bit about in, in our demonstration is we have a really keen, um, address algorithm that helps, uh, QuickBooks better understand, uh, to what reference, uh, a sale is being processed in a particular locale. So it knows how to organize sales tax properly, right? Cause Shopify uh in inherently is a you know multi-location tax collecting type of an environment that deals with nexus and all that stuff and knows the difference between an online sale and a physical locate store in different locations uh quickbooks you know has that capability but like when you think about how you're putting a sales receipt into the system when you're doing it manually even right there's no sort of way that quickbooks knows how to default which address you want right so unless you specifically change it on the sales receipt and know how to do that and know that it's even relevant, your taxes won't line up in the right place. Uh, so we have a really cool algorithm that makes that flawless and 100% accurate. We'll get into that a little bit. Um, and the other thing when we go through this process is to think about that, um, and something you said earlier, Dan, maybe uh, think to say this, is that we don't reinvent the wheel with what we're doing. Like we just kind of figure out how to, you know, make sure QuickBooks is, you know, to the best it can be. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we're simply doing is we're emulating the process as if you were sitting in front of a computer without you having to sit in front of a computer. Um, and so it kind of inherently goes well with the way people are used to running the, their, their bookkeeping practices usually. Um, okay, so the five areas we want to focus in on here uh, is we want to talk about uh, some of the value that we bring by creating and updating uh, and updating sales receipts and refunds, by the way, that come from Shopify in, into QuickBooks Online. Um, Dan, you mentioned about uh, sales items earlier. Uh, we do give op options, right? So a a as an example, and we, we, I'm not gonna cover this as much in the demo, so I'm just gonna mention it now, is when you do uh, think about customer management and item management, right? Some people like the idea of bringing sales receipts in. They like that idea over journal entries for all the reasons you, you mentioned earlier. But on the other hand, sometimes people get intimidated by that because now they're thinking, oh my goodness, if I get a thousand sales, am I going to get a thousand one-time customers now clogging up QuickBooks? And people don't, some people don't want that. Um, I don't know if actually wants that, but, <laughs> but a lot of people don't want that. Um, so you get to choose if you want the customer details coming in, or would you rather it go to just a bulk customer? You, you can decide in our system. Same thing with items, right? So you could decide, hey, you know, Inventory is great. Uh, I want to manage inventory uh, or I want to manage my sales by items, uh, but maybe I don't, you know, maybe I, I still want that sales receipt coming in, but I don't want those item details. So same thing. You could decide if you want to, you know, track those details or load it in as a bulk item. And by the way, when you do uh, choose to track details, you, you have options on how you want to map, right? So you can map like on the customer side, things like email to email or phones and names and all that sort of stuff. And then on the items, you can do standard product name matching. You can do SKU matching. Uh, I heard you mention variants earlier. We support variants as well. Uh, so it's all kind of cool things you get to choose from. Uh, so that's one point. Another point is in this demo, you're going to see that we do it fast, right? You mentioned about the sale getting booked on the payout date. With us, uh, the sale gets booked instantly. Um, generally speaking, from the time it goes from Shopify to QuickBooks, I mean, usually it's within seconds, but, you know, it's a minute or two at most. 
uh, and you'll see that. Yeah. Information. Yeah. By the time you get to look at it on the yeah. dashboard, it's already posted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which when you think about the next topic, inventory is a critical component, right? Because if you truly do intend to manage inventory in QuickBooks, right, you want, like, it's all about how fast and how accurate and right, because seconds can make the difference between, you know, whether I have it or I don't have it, or my customer thinks I have it and I really didn't have it. Right, and how you deal with those stockout situations. But we do have a, a, a way to update inventory inside of QuickBooks, and I'll, I'll show you that here today. Uh, and then one of our uh, newest features that people are incredibly excited about, Dan included, by the way, um, is uh, that we now have Shopify payouts coming through. And so uh, we've uh, separated the concept of uh, we let sales be sales uh, and we let payouts be payouts. So now, you can have your sales come in, book the sale at its gross level as it should uh, in, let's call it, you know, instant time, right? As soon as possible, as it comes in from when the time the customer placed the order, recognize your inventory adjustments, et cetera. And then three days later, when that payout comes through, we bring that payout in, auto create the deposit, reconcile against those sales. So you don't have to now think, oh my goodness, I have to check off a thousand sales that came in on that payout. Nope, we do that for you all automatically. And we take all the fees and we drop it down at the bottom of the payout. So your net payment is 100% right. accurate with the bank statement, which now you can reconcile against your actual sales. So Michelle's um, top video on YouTube of how to clean up the undeposited funds uh, <laughs> account is basically a non-issue anymore with this because it does all that for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Michelle. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's great. That is absolutely great. And you know what, Mark? I can't believe nobody's done it before. I mean, yeah. it seems so obvious, but I'm so glad you guys are doing this because. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. That. Yeah, uh, I, I, it yeah. definitely it was obvious to us uh, when we got in there. Gennady can tell you it was very tricky, so we can understand why people may not do it. <laughs> but yeah. um, but it was yeah. It, it, I'm glad to hear you say that because that that you know we we do like to, the value to us is when you know people like yourselves you know see see these sorts of things because it shows us that we're on the right track to making the kind of difference that we're looking to make, um, yeah. which is awesome. Uh, and then another another awesome thing we'll talk about today too, by the way, is uh, our our tax uh, management capabilities. I guess I'll call it, but not that we're managing taxes, but we we ensure and we make sure that the taxes in QuickBooks are 100% accurate with the taxes that are in Shopify. Uh, and that takes on two, two focuses. One is that the actual amounts are accurate, right? So if you try to do this, sometimes you might yeah. see where uh, QuickBooks gets like pennies off per transaction um, because, you know, sometimes there's some rounding things with differently between the two systems. And then the other is, as I mentioned before, where do those taxes are actually supposed to get located like which agency is that tax associated with and then that other one about tax nexus right physical nexus versus economic nexus where you have to get add-ons to manage all this uh again you know, we have this algorithm built in that that lets quickbooks be as smart as shopify when it comes to those things yeah and you're and you're really using you know the information that you sh that you get from shopify as the guidance of, of what this should actually be, you know, because things will change, uh, you know, after, you know, the transaction posted or, or anything like that. So you kind of use, um, you know, Shopify as your as your source of truth of what to tell what to tell QuickBooks exactly. and, um, you know, leave, leave it up to customers or leave it up to clients to make things a little bit challenging when it comes <laughs> when it comes to, to, to this sort of stuff. So let's um. We've got, you know, other, you know, screenshots and things like that in the in the slides. So if people want to download the, the the slides off of the website, they can certainly, you know, go through some of these things. But I, I want you to, I want to take a look in in your dashboard, um, and 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 show, you know, and highlight some of these things. So to to answer to uh, to, to Janice's question about clearing accounts, um, with the with your with your payout functionality. Um, that I think that is a game changer, um, you know, in this um, in this space, right? Because of all of the the, the connectors that I that I've seen and, and looked at, is that everybody wants to use these clearing accounts, right? And 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 then that just makes more work for the accountant to make sure that the transactions that are deposited and the payouts are deposited 
match, right? So that instead of reconciling the bank account, you're also reconciling these clearing accounts on, on top of all that. But you're taking a different approach where this is actually going through undeposited funds of, of, of all things, right? The payments to deposit um, is actually going into to undeposited funds and you can't make a deposit. Um, and, and this was a thing that I was kind of like leery about using undeposited funds because it is a special QuickBooks account. And I'm not talking like short bus special account, but it's got it's got some functionality tied to it inside of QuickBooks um, to make sure that you do this right uh, so that it's not causing a problem with with your connector uh, versus um, the reality of, of what's coming in. But but the goal is. When a payout comes in, it gets deposited through undeposited funds into the bank, into into the uh, into the into the bank account, and then the bank feed just then matches to that because the bank feeds coming from Shopify are horrible <laughs> because there's just Shopify transfer. What what was that for? You know, <laughs> was that the payout or was that uh, a fee that I had to pay or was you know what was that? Uh, that that came in, uh, or was it a refund, or wh whatever it is? You know, it's it's hard to tell just from the bank fees. But if you have all that information in there, in the bank uh, account, and then the bank feed comes in, well, then it just matches because that's what it's looking at first is the amount. And you guys uh, again take that uh, gospel according to uh, Shopify as the <laughs> as the amount, and that's what typically will show up in the bank. Feed. I'm right. sorry, I stole your thunder. No, no, please do. <laughs> um, and, you know, and one other thing too, then uh, you know, um, as, we, as we had discussed previously, is that uh, you know, for, for those that uh, maybe if, you know, because because we integrate allows you to connect multiple Shopify stores, right, to one we integrate account and load all that into QuickBooks Online. So one concern that we've heard, right, is if you start doing that, and I have all this going into undeposited funds. How can you segment it, right? Because maybe you want to put, you know, one store or one clearing account or one in another, right? That sort of thing. But we have in our defaults a, uh, a setting at the connection level where you can specify a location. Uh, you know, a QuickBooks location comes right out of your, your QuickBooks table into our system. And you pick a QuickBooks location so that when your sales get posted, you can have one channel posting a one location in undeposited fund, you know, in the sale and the other two other. So when you go to filter your undeposited funds, you now do that by location and sort of like emulates that same concept of splitting out, you know, those, those sales that you're trying to keep track of. Yeah, because that was my other big concern about using undeposited funds is that, well, if every, if all of the sales receipts are coming into undeposited funds, that's going to make a huge, um, problem especially if people are using undeposited funds for other things that aren't you know um you know shopify based right like they create an invoice and they receive a deposit goes through undeposited funds oh good lord how do i how do i uh get through this mess right so to your point you can set up locations and then choose the location on on the undeposited fund screen to only show specific location so it can weed out those extra those extra uh, transactions. Right. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So uh, sorry, I'm just jumping ahead uh, to yep. for people would have to do this, although I have to do it because part of the demo is I think the first thing we'll do, we'll get I'm going to focus on the that payout since we've kind of like, you know, discussed it right now. <laughs> so might as well like kind of follow mm -hmm. up on that. But before I do that, I'm just going to drop a couple of quick sales in that we will run the payout against in the demo. Um, so I can kind of show a couple things. One is I sure. will show how we process the sale and how that goes into QuickBooks. And then people can also see how how fast it, it, it generally does go. Um, so I'm just going to kind of make up some you know fake customers here. Get my computer will type. Yeah. Um, and, and while you're doing that, I wanted to address the, the, the question in the in the chat. Is that Shopify handles different payment methods and how does this connection handle those methods? So as long as it's coming through Shopify payments, like there's a recent change where Amazon Pay uh, is now being in, included in Shopify payments. So as long as they have some kind of connection into Shopify payments, then this will this will continue to to do this uh, 
I think the best word and the Intuit buzzword is automatically uh, <laughs> to be able to, to to do this. Now, if they're using something outside of that, like, you know, uh, PayPal or Sezzle that where it's, you know, completely outside of the Shopify payments realm, uh, then this won't work. But that's not like the end the be all and end all that's on your radar for right. you know for for that to work um you know for for other payment methods correct correct um i'm gonna go ahead and push through the sale just one thing i want to point out is so i put this sale in for an address out of new york manhattan um and shopify knew enough to calculate tax on it because one of the locations we have set up inside of shopify is a new york address Right, so Shopify, you know, just pointing out as we do this, Shopify knows how to auto calculate that. So we get a total here of $100.16. Uh, and I'll go ahead and process this one order. And then I'm just going to drive the same exact thing through on a second order, real quick. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then we will show the output of that and do payout. And, and your main focus is let's start with Shopify because that's the most commonly used one and then you'll take all these learnings and move them into other channels so like ross was mentioning in the in the in the q a well, what about squarespace what about woocommerce what about you know fill in the blank exactly. um, you know you're going to take these learnings uh that you're learning with you know the the big hairy beast of of shopify <laughs> and then you know taking those into the in, into the other uh sale online sales channel that is correct. Yes, uh, and, and we chose to go uh, deep into Shopify first. You know, you just kind of go, go deep and really knock out everything we can, uh, and then yes, take that and move over to the next one. Do, do you regret that decision? Uh. Uh, not, not at all. Not at all. Uh, because it's it's been part of what's like kind of you know showing people that there's a there's another way to do this, right? That that can make things a lot easier. You know, I'd, I'd rather help people get really easy on one thing, right? There, right? And then eat, have eat the there. elephant first, and then, yeah. you know, everybody else is uh, kittens and uh, <laughs> <laughs> kittens and puppies. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So this and one. What's in, but, and what's but interesting is that Shopify has recently opened itself up to other uh, platforms. So we now have. Shopify uh, orders coming through from Amazon and eBay and and others that that are going through uh, Facebook Marketplace. Um, so they're basically uh, being the consolidator, and we obviously support that uh, from from the get go. And so we're now having those types of orders come through as well. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, so uh, one thing I, as I was about to mention uh, before I switched over. So that second sale I did uh, based out of Georgia and Shopify knew not to charge tax on that one uh, because I don't have a physical location set up inside of Shopify for Georgia. Got it. Um, now you'll see, we already have a number two here, the two sales we process. And on one other point real quick, just so there's no confusion. I am inside of We Integrate today because I am demoing how it works. Uh, we Integrate is a sort of like set it and forget it type of a system. So you don't have to come in here. There's no buttons to push. Um, just build a connection and then everything automates whether you're in our application or not. But you can come in it's here. A, it's we'll a crock pot uh, application. You just, uh, <laughs> you know, load your ingredients and then, you know, wait, wait for dinner. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and now you'll see here, these two lines here at the top. Uh, these are the two orders I just processed out of Shopify. So we're showing Shopify orders number 1552 and 1553. Uh, for the total amounts, you can see if you remember what I showed on the screen, uh, the whole total of the first one was $116, which includes some shipping and tax, and this one doesn't have any uh, tax at all. We show you the ship status and pay status here, so we take a little bit more of an operational flow on, on what we do too. Like, so for example, um, I'm just going to rest for one minute here. Uh, I think we've got enough time, so I'm going to kind of squeeze it in. Is if I take, um, let me just refresh Shopify. If I take one of these orders, and if I not show up if I cooperate, um, if I take one, let's say I take uh, the second one here, and if I open it up, and now I want to fulfill it, you know whether I'm doing it in Shopify or a third-party app or even a third-party warehouse connected, 
to, to, to Shopify and that fulfillment is done. Right here, I'll just kind of put some values in right into the screen. <clears throat> you know, we'll pick whatever tracking number, and then we'll leave Star Trek as the carrier, et cetera, et cetera, and then say uh, fulfill. What will happen in, uh, we integrate first of all, and I'll just give that a couple seconds here. So I'll just kind of point back over here. So we show you uh, the pay status that even paid, the ship status, they're still showing us open, they haven't shipped yet. Um, they've been received, you know, a certain period of time ago. And then last sync, this is the last time it went, got connected here with QuickBooks. And you can see that that one that I shipped now shows that it's been partially shipped, right? Less than a minute ago. If I hover over here, we show you the actual date and time, but now we show you the QuickBooks sales receipt number that got generated inside of QuickBooks, right? So 3174. And then on the, this one, it was 3173. 3, 3, uh, we do give you an option that you can map the Shopify order number as the QuickBooks sales sheet number if you want, or you could use the QuickBooks, you know, auto generated number. Both have a place, but regardless which way you choose, we make sure it's clear to you uh, that there's a connection between this sales receipt number and this order number. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go in here and show you these two sales that we just generated, uh, and then we'll go ahead and um, run that payout through for the deposit. Um, so here are the two sales receipts, 3173 and 3174. You'll see here in the memo, we show you the actual uh, Shopify order numbers right here. So you don't have to go very far to see that, you know, this sales receipt is that order number. You'll notice they are exactly to the penny of what I showed you on the Shopify and the We Integrate side. If I come into this well, first one here for $116, I'm sorry, $100.16. Um, you'll see that the uh, the taxes. Uh, let's see that little. Sorry, just taking a second. There we go. Um, right, the the taxes are all, all accounted for. It knew to it knew to do all the taxes while well, that's loading. Um, and one of the ways that we accommodate that is, you know, we show you here the ship to uh, and address information, but then we also uh, replace the ship from based on that physical location that we saw inside of Shopify. So QuickBooks now sees this as a ship to New York from New York scenario and knows that on its own, not just that it needs tax, which we overwrite anyway from Shopify, but then where to put that tax. Like that tax belongs to that New York tax agency. Uh, and you can see it's $8.18 right out of Shopify. And if it's a return, it would just be a return receipt with the exact same information. Correct. And because we're doing that too, when the payouts are coming through and they have those returns embedded inside of them, um it uh it will um it will account for it properly yeah it's really cool um all right so that while while uh gennady may be while you're processing that payout i am going to go ahead and just show this other second sales receipt real fast um and we might go over a little bit um you know especially if, if folks have you know good questions that i'm seeing you know rolling in here uh, as well, but we do want to make sure that we see this payout <laughs> because this is I, th that is the the, the biggest uh, game. I, I, you know, I'm I'm just going to say it's a game changer in, in this space where you're Don't actually going money. through okay. undeposited funds. Okay, so so on this sales receipt here, um, this one is uh, the second one I did when I shipped to Georgia. So you see, it shipped to Georgia. Uh, you'll notice uh, the address here is, well, you wouldn't know it by inherently, but you see it's a different address. This is based on the default QuickBooks address now because we couldn't find a, an address matching our algorithm to control that physical nexus. So what will happen is, uh, and I'll show you in the nexus area in a second here, uh, that gets tracked by QuickBooks' uh, economic nexus tool. Um, but you'll see down here at the bottom, there's no sales tax applied. Uh, and the total comes out to the exact penny that was on the Shopify side. Uh, one of these we too, we also do, by the way, um, remember I did that fulfillment uh, on the Shopify side. I took a little like, side sidestep and then I came back and, and dropped that in there. So when that comes available, we go back, we update the sales receipt. So you have all that tracking information here right on the sales receipt for those that need it. And um, we also are loading the shipping fees here as a line item. On the PL, it comes out exactly the same, but there's more value here. It helps us better control the sales tax as well. But in addition to that, we're now able to show you A, uh, the service level. So you can see the shipping service level here is economy. It could be rush, it could be whatever. Uh, but then we also, when Shopify sends us the tracking info, 
in this case, like the URL to track the package, uh, we add that to, to that reference as well. Just give me some of little additional extra value. Uh, to Dan's earlier point, you'll see it here on undeposited funds. <laughs> um, so that's an example of sales receipts. And now uh, I am told the payout has been processed uh, for those two orders I just did. This, typically, this would be a couple days later. Right? <laughs> the reality is, is that Shopify doesn't process payments this quickly. Uh, but in your testing environment, uh, so a couple days have passed. There's now a, a, a payout. So let's take yes. a look at, at that. Yes, a couple days have passed. It's great now in the election like that. And while you're bringing this up, I'm going to throw up the last um, the last poll. Uh, sure. So if people do need to drop off at the top of the hour, uh, they can do so. And where to go? <laughs> I had it. Oh, there it is. There we go. So we'll just launch that poll uh, about learning more about we integrate. All right. So as it did it, did it post already? I missed it. I blinked. Uh, <laughs> did, what, did the payout post? No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it actually, it did. Uh, so I'm in the, so we have a checking account that we set up in our demo called Shopify checking one. Uh, and here's the, uh, the payment that just came through, right? So we took the two cells together, put them together. The net deposit is 177.41. If I hover over the split here, you'll see as soon as that pops up, I don't know if you guys can see the hover over. You'll see there's two sales receipts, right, that are on there minus the two uh, processing fees. Go ahead and edit that because I, one thing I really like about what you do is is uh, is is account for the fees um, separately, and there's there's reference to it. So if you scroll all the way down to the down to the bottom, yep, or yep. you know what what Michelle tells you to do is how to clean up credit card charges <laughs> in undeposited funds in order to get that payout, uh, you know, that the bank deposit to actually match is to put, you know, negative uh, dollar amounts in the bottom and you actually split them out individually with the reference number to the transaction. So, you know, you'll be able to see uh, all of that in one place and you don't have to necessarily go hunting for, well, what was this $3 and one cent for? Uh, oh, the reference number here, that's the Shopify order number. Uh, I can go and, and check on that if, if need be, if it's uh, if it's an odd amount or, or, or something like that. Right, exactly, exactly. And uh, we also have like an overflow uh, scenario too. So if for some reason, if like a deposit came through and, um, you know, the, the payout was for, you know, 10 sales and, you know, for some reason, only nine of them are in QuickBooks for whatever reason. That, that overflow would get thrown into an unmatched account for whatever that variation the differences. And it, at least it, it kind of hones you in on, hey, it was able to reconcile everything that it had, gave you sort of like this overflow, what's called clearing account kind of scenario, but didn't disrupt the fact that your payment matched your right. bank. And now you can just kind of deal with that small piece of discrepancy and figure out what went wrong on that and make your adjustment. Yeah, and the and the biggest um, concern, right, that I had when when you were telling me that you were going to be thinking about using undeposited funds as your payment deposit account was, well, what what if there's a payment that or, or a sale that's not posted, right? <laughs> or you know, if if you can't use, you know, because it's going through and checking off the sales receipts in the payments to deposit section, and then accounting for the fees. Well, what if somebody got click happy? deleted the sales receipt by mistake or it never posted because it uh because of there was some some error how do you handle that that deposit in that that situation because the reality is, is funds were deposited just because they're not in undeposited funds shouldn't stop the payment from actually depositing right right so how do you handle that oh um <laughs> yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> that was a question and that's what i meant uh the same, the same way. I, I, you know, the other scenario. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I thought it was related to that. Yeah. So, so we have in our system. You set up a default uh, account where you can place uh, post uh, unmatched monies, right? So if uh, if the deposit, you know, was a thousand dollars, and you know the payout's a thousand dollars, we want to make sure that when that pay deposit here in QuickBooks gets created, that it's also a thousand dollars, right? Because Dan's point is money's still coming in, right? It's just a matter of why did it come in. 
And so we make sure we ensure the integrity of the deposit. So if there's something we cannot find for some reason, uh, something's out of balance or, you know, the sales or seat went rogue, um, that variant value will wind up getting posted to that unmatched account. And you get to the opportunity to call it what you want and you just set it up inside of our system that this account gets used for this purpose. And then we uh, we post those overflow amounts, you know, could be positive or negative, of course. To, to so, that. so in the grand scheme of things, it will it will go into you know some kind of nebulous account, uh, unmatched sales or whatever it is that you want to call it, yep. and that's the account that you that you really need to look at and see. Well, okay, this is my problem child account to look through, as opposed to the the entire clearing account. And to someone's point, do uh, you have to use undeposited funds? The answer is no. You can still use your clearing accounts if you're if that's what you if that's what you used to and you don't want people to touch undeposited funds you can certainly not do that but this is is one of those things that you know what are you going to do with your free time when you're not <laughs> needing to clear up all the clearing accounts anymore right right exactly exactly yep and so it makes the clear any uh this, michelle to you this was kind of like a blind uh taste test right like you, <laughs> yeah. you there's a blind I'm reaction impressed. what do you think i i am very impressed i love how slick and and streamlined it is and i i think it's pretty cool i mean mm -hmm. i really do love it and everything the only one thing i was sitting here wondering about and it doesn't happen very often but occasionally you'll have a net deposit for the day that's negative because you had return like let's say in january after the holidays and everybody's returning their Christmas gifts or their holiday gifts that they didn't like or something. So at the end of the, the day, when that deposit comes up negative, is that going to cause any problems? Uh, like no. That one, had two, that one had two transactions. Let's say there were five transactions for the day or whatever, and it came out to be a negative deposit for the day. Is that going to cause any problems? Uh, no, it, it, it does not, Michelle. It actually it works. Okay. Well, because uh -huh. because like you'll see, we have like even in here, we see, we've shown that we have some refunds in here. So Perfect. whether it's positive or negative, it comes in, creates the deposit, and we're good. Yeah. That's awesome. That is just awesome. Yeah, I'm Thank impressed. You. I love it. So I encourage people. I, there's been some great discussions in the chat. I've been watching them and everything, and I encourage people to call you all because there's been a lot of discussions. Can I do this? Can I do that? What about this? What about that? I encourage everybody to schedule a demo with you all um, yeah. and follow up with you um, for their specific questions and, and things like that. So the uh, the big takeaway that that I'm that I'm seeing where where we integrate you know specializes is when you need to uh, account for the, the the inventory inside of QuickBooks and you're 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 solely using Shopify. That's where that's where that's where we integrate would would do really well. There are other applications out there that will do multiple sales channels, and maybe they even you know work with the payouts and those types of things. But the price point uh, for doing that is is significantly more than than what we when we integrate will will charge. Because typically, uh, you would say, Mark, you know, mostly the the pricing strategy for um, uh, uh, for, for this, this, this industry is volume of sales and number of sales channels to connect. And, right. and you guys adopt that as well. Um, but I mean, if you're just talking Shopify and, uh, and, and Shopify payments and, and inventory, um, I don't think anyone comes close, uh, to, to, to where your price point is. Um, you know, the other players that are out there, you know, you're looking at like a hundred dollars a month, uh, for their lowest <laughs> right, right. Uh, option where you are, you know, significantly less than that. You yeah. have a yeah. free trial. <laughs> right. We have a 15 day free trial. Correct. Uh, and then for those that are, um, uh, let's say under 500, uh, transactions per month, you can get started for as little as $19 a month. Um, and you get access to the full features that, that we showed today um, for, for that price. Uh, and when, you know, there are there are some other competitors out there around the same price point, but what you'll see is where, you know, we're $19 a month and they might be $19 a month 
for that $19 a month with our competitor, you may get, let's say 200 orders a month, or 200 documents a month. And with us, you get 500. Right, to not get to more the, for less. Time saving. <laughs> yeah, not to mention the time saving, you know, right. just because yes. it makes everything so much easier. Um, you know, so, I mean, I think you guys really have hit it here. I mean, I think you guys really hit the nail on the head and you did some stuff that seems very obvious and you're like, why didn't anybody do this sooner? You know, so kudos to you and job well done. So I encourage people to, you know, call with additional questions, schedule a demo and, and check it out for, for themselves. So great job. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. All right. Well, we, we did run a little over. So this is the power hour plus 10 minutes. Plus uh, power so, hour plus. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody so we'll, plus uh, we'll, things these days. We plus it. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, Shopify plus power hour plus. Yes. This is the uh, after show. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you all joining us, uh, Mark and Gennady. I appreciate you joining us from We Integrate. Michelle, it's always great to see you. Uh, so we'll be here in a couple of weeks with um, more marketing advice from the folks at uh, Wizard of Ads uh, and how how you can bring, build a story uh, for a, for a marketing firm. So we'll we'll talk to that them next time, and we'll see you next time on the QB Power Hour. Have a great day, everyone. So, thank you so all right, much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dan.